Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for High Velocity Radio. Welcome to the High Velocity Radio Show, where we celebrate top performers producing better results in less time. Stone Payton here with you this afternoon. This is going to be a good one. You guys are in for a real treat. Please join me in welcoming to the broadcast the business credit guy, Mr. Drew Smith. How are you, man? Hey, Stone. I'm amazing. Thanks so much for having me on today. I'm uh, really excited about this uh, conversation, um, what we're going to tackle. And uh, I think I think uh, our business owners today are going to be very impressed as well. I've got a good feeling. Well, I do too. Delighted to have you on the broadcast. I got a ton of questions. I, I know we're not going to get to them all, but I, I think a great place to start would be if you could just give me and our listeners a, a bit of an idea of a broad stroke, you know, mission, purpose. What are you really out there trying to do for folks, man? Yeah, you're very kind in saying that. You know, I come from a long line of uh, business owners and entrepreneurs. I've been my own one for over 20 years. And um, one of the biggest challenges that I find today in speaking to, um, you know, thousands of business owners every single year, you know, it's either, hey, Drew, I've got to find staff and look up. I can't always help with that, but it always comes down to money. And the system is structured for most people in such a way where the money is available if you know where to find it. Unfortunately, most business owners aren't given the right information and nobody ever takes the time to really help them understand this this, this funding and, and, and world of credit. And too many business owners, the number one mistake is using their own personal credit for business where they run out of money, get tied up in all these personal guarantees, and at worst to say, they put their personal assets at risk. So the mission, um, not only for me and my partners at Jade Gold, is to help as many business owners as we can get access to funding if and when they need it, because not everyone needs it right now, but if they need it to protect their personal assets and make sure that that money is there to support the business, their community, and most importantly, their families. So what are some of the key differences between personal credit, which I feel pretty familiar with, and and, and business credit? Walk us through that. Yeah, you know, that that's a great question. You know, most people, you know, from here in the US that were born here, you know, certainly when they turn 18, they just get open to this wonderful world where they're probably, um, you know, given their, their first credit card. Uh, being born in Australia and living here for over 20 years, when I, when I first came here, I had to build that personal credit from scratch. And the biggest challenge with personal credit when you've got a score from 350 or 850 is they start to give it to you and then you start to use it and then they start to take it away again. <laughs> you know, there, 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 there's this classic thing of, hey, you know, here's a little bit of money and then you start to use the money and they go, oh, no, no, we're going to have to lower your score. And the reason that happens is it's always linked to that debt to income ratio. You, know, you get to that, so that 30, 40%, and they say, whoa, 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 we, we need to see, use it responsibly. So if you've got money, you don't need credit. And if you need money and you try and use the credit, then they take it away from you. And while that can be fine for some personal you know, uh, purchases, um, you can hear I'm not a big fan of it. Um, it does not work with business. And the truth of the matter is there's a better way. And, and, and what this really comes down to is when we structure ourselves in a business and we open that, that LLC, whether it's in a corporation or, or, or an incorporator, whatever it is, we end up with that LLC and we get our EIN number. And that's probably the only happy day you're excited to hear from the IRS, right? <laughs> Receive your EIN. And, and most business owners shy away from it, thinking it's just taxes and quarterlies. But the truth of the matter is that EIN in legal terms is a legal person, a legal entity. And that can build its own credit, access its own credit, 10 to 100 times of what you can do on your personal, it's designed for business, um, and it allows you to do far more on way better terms than you can ever get it. So to, to, to really answer your question, the key differences for business owners is your social security number is none of your business's business. So let's stop thinking that way. Let's stop piercing that corporate veil and start unlocking and utilizing EIN credit and your world will change. I guarantee it. Well, it sounds like a noble pursuit to me. I gotta, I gotta ask, man, the backstory. How in the world did you find yourself in this line of work helping these kinds of people? 
Yeah, that's a wonderful question. So, uh, you know, when I first actually came out of uh, high school, I wanted to do two things. I wanted to travel the world <laughs> and I wanted to make money. And my business degree actually had a, a side of hospitality. And before I did too much traveling, I, I was working for one of the world's largest banks as a, a financial advisor and, and learning that world. And there were two things that working in the corporate finance world worked out for me is that, you know, I didn't want to work in the corporate finance world. I wanted to <laughs> help people you know, but I didn't want to get bogged down in making these banks and these institutions, you know, more money than, than they already had. And growing up and and watching my parents run and, and, and um, you know, struggle with businesses and money and, and credit, it always left me wondering why do so many people, you know, struggle to that. Um, in every industry I've been in, in every part that I've worked in, it's always been an outstanding way where I really understood this personal side of credit, but just didn't understand what some of these these banks and, and corporations were doing and why they never had to worry about getting money. And and it was through more of a passion. It was through more of partnerships. It was through more of trial and error. And then, you know, eventually meeting my partners at, at Jay Galt, we've really been able to teach Main Street what Wall Street knows. And by doing that, we've been able to level the playing field and allow Main Street businesses to access that type of corporate credit and funding. But more comfortable for the way that they want to do it. And so for me, it's it's just become a passion of mine now. It really is. I'm that, I'm that business guy finance geek. Call me what you want, but I'm here to help you. <laughs> well, I believe you. I can hear it in your voice. It, it, the, your passion and enthusiasm for providing this kind of help really does come through over the air. Now that you've been doing it a while, what's the the most rewarding, man? What's the most fun about it for you? Sure. So, look, you know, we've been through some really turbulent times here in the U.S. And look, I lived in uh, California for, for a long time, right in the middle of Hollywood. And, uh, you know, I used to think that, um, you know, watching those award shows, you know, sometimes and, and getting to even invited to some events, these celebrities would sort of get, you know, all of these wonderful prizes, right? These gift bags. And, and I thought, hey, they, they don't need all those prizes. They're already rich. <laughs> and it made me think about corporations and the way they just get given money. So what is really rewarding for me now, even though I'm down here in the uh, sandy shores of, of Florida, is seeing the everyday business never get turned down for funding. Last year, over sixty, uh, sorry, six hundred thousand businesses shut down, and eighty three percent of the time, it was because they didn't have funding or couldn't get access to funding. So that really frustrated me because. All businesses can get it, but no one takes time to show it. And once I structure a business, teach a business the right way to do it, they'll never get turned down for funding again and never go out of business for lack of funding again. And uh, there is no question that that's the best part of it. So what are some early steps? And, you know, I'll just use Business Radio X as a use case, if you don't mind. If you have a a different or better one, that's fine. But my business partner and I, we have a, a relatively successful media company. We make a comfortable living. We each have good, you know, individual credit scores. But like, what are some of the, the first few steps a business like ours might need to, to take to kind of get going down this path? Yeah, that's a great question. So look, it all comes down from a structure. You know, down here in uh, in Florida, we can't build a, a house on a sandy or rocky foundation, certainly with our uh, hurricane season, right? And it starts with the way that we structure a business. There's a, a company called LexisNexis. Um, some people may have heard of them. Not many people know what they do, but they've got over 125 points that uh, they will judge a company on to make it fundable for corporate lending. Now, these aren't difficult things in, in, in any way. And, you know, Stone, I think you'll be impressed that you and your business partner have probably done a lot of these already. And it comes down to having that LLC. You can't do it just with a sole proprietor. You've got to be registered with the state. You've got to have your website. You've got to have your uh, – in fact, one of the biggest mistakes I still see today is people using Gmail addresses, um, Yahoo addresses, uh, heaven forbid, even AOL, <laughs> I still see – but you have to think when a bank or a vendor or a lender looks at your company, what do they see? Do they see a rock solid establishment or do they see one that's still advertising on, you know, a, a Facebook or, or a marketplace trying to get business? So to answer your question, um, it's just about taking uh, a couple of steps in the beginning to make sure that your business looks incredible to the banks and the, and the lenders. And that's not hard, you know, and we, you know, really go through and make sure that all of those are ticked off. Um, Banks don't always make sense and lenders don't always make sense in some of their uh, categories. But remember the old um, 411, the the telephone directory that you'd call up to get a phone number? Yeah. 
you know, just having your number, it's free to do this. Your business phone number registered with them is a way to tick another one of those green ticks off. And we don't think about it that much, but once we understand how to structure that, um, then you're set up for funding. I often probably think about it like that model on the, I don't know, Paris or New York runway, that supermodel. At night, they look incredible with all the you know cameras from every angle. They look perfect. Time and effort went into making that happen. But when that model woke up in the morning, did they look the same? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> so- the short answer to this is once, you know, we look at a business, do you look like the supermodel that's on the runway or the one that just woke up? And if you look like the one that just woke up, we're going to get some hair and makeup in there to make you look good. Make well, sense? Yeah, it does make sense. And uh, your instincts were right on track. We've got a lot of these boxes. I mean, we do have those things in place. Again, going back to to our use case. So do we really already have a credit, a business credit profile and we just don't know it? <laughs> That, that's an excellent question, and you would be right on the money. Um, 90% of businesses that I speak to, and that's nine zero or higher, don't know they have business credit. Um, they don't know how to access it, and they don't know where to even you know find it. Mm. So one of the first things that we do is we search for a business credit report. Now, a business credit report is much different from personal because it's public knowledge. That means that you, your competitors, you know, you can look up any company in America. There's no hard or soft pull to ever look at it. And the company um, will show a couple of different things normally. It's the revenue. um, They're going to have a credit score of zero to 100. And then they're going to have an approved credit limit. More often than not, Sometimes we don't find one. The company just was never registered the right way in the beginning, but most companies will have one, but the recommended credit limit in the score is very low because it has never been used. The way to increase a company's credit score and a credit limit is very simple. We just take your everyday expenses and have them report to the credit bureaus. The three credit bureaus are Dun & Bradstreet, Experian Business, and Equifax Business. And Stone, you can just take the gas that you put in your car, you know, with a fleet card. You can take your cell phone business, you know, cell phone bill or your internet here or the lights you're running in the studio. And we can get those reporting to the credit bureaus. All it shows is you're making money and spending money. So they're going to want to give you money. And that's how we increase your recommended credit limit. Does that make sense? It does make sense. So right now it's quite possible that although, you know, we're making some money and spending some money every month that the as a bit the these bureaus aren't necessarily picking up on on that is that accurate Th- that that's correct yeah absolutely you know if you've never used it you probably don't have one there or it's not a true reflection uh i meet companies that uh you know doing you know two two and a half million dollars a year uh you know in gross sales so not a big company right but not a startup and their credit limit might be 10 grand and the companies think, hang on, we, we've never missed a bill. We, we pay our employees. Everything's on track. We, we look great. Um, but to the credit bureaus, it's like picking up a Carfax report of a car that you were you know, going to check out to potentially buy and seeing that they've never had an oil change. You know, so, you know, mm. it, it's this business credit reports that are so often underlooked and most people don't realize that it is an asset of their business. So just by knowing it's there and doing the right steps, it increases the value of business. It makes you recession proof because if you ever need money, it's there for you. Um, but you know, not only that, it's going to make the company look better, be more value, and be able to get money. You know, quite frankly, if you ever want it. All right. So there are some steps we can take. Like if we've we've got some expenditures coming up, we're going to upgrade a server. We're going. There's some steps to take to do that in the in such a way that it's going to positively impact our, uh, our our credit horsepower over on the business side, it sounds like. You're absolutely right. And, you know, the, the one thing is, you know, because um, being a business credit expert doesn't make me a tax expert, nor does it make me a, a lawyer or a plumber, right? And mm-hmm. businesses sometimes think, well, if I report some things to the credit bureaus, is it going to affect me negatively? And, and it's not the case. The fact is that you're making money and that's probably being recorded somewhere. They just want to see that you're spending money as well. And the more money that you can show that you're spending, the more money they're going to want to give you. And just by responsibly using that credit, you know, they're going to give you a uh, an unlimited limited amount, you know, and that's the really fun part about this. I got to believe in your line of work, you probably run into a lot of patterns. Like, 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 let's say you started helping, helping Lee and I with the, with the business radio X network. 
you're probably sure. got to have your antenna up for, you know, these three things, these five things that I bet Stone and Lee aren't doing, or here's two or three that they could immediately start doing tomorrow. Do you see some of the same patterns over and over mistakes or things that people fail to even do? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, one comes to mind immediately, and that is the famous business credit card. So um, I meet these businesses and they say, oh, Drew, I don't I, I don't need business credit. I've got business credit. I go, oh, what have you got? And they say, well, I've got this business credit card from ABC Bank. And I say, oh, show me that business credit card. And uh, and they pull it out and it's got their business name. Great. But then it's got their personal name on it. Mm. And the biggest myth, you know, that comes to this so-called business credit is why, if it was true business credit, would it have your name on it? And what that bank has done is they've given you a personal credit card with personal rates more than likely that is not reporting to any of the credit bureaus that you're personally guaranteeing. But because you, they put your business name on it, you feel great and you think you got business credit. So personal credit's just in your name. Business credit is in your name and the company name. And what we want to do is we want the true corporate credit where your name is no longer on your business credit card. Because just when it's in the company name, now it reports to the business, it's an asset of the business. And once again, you're not personally guaranteeing it. So these are, you know, I could talk all day about this, but that's just one that comes to mind. I run into every single day. People having a business credit card with their you know, own name on it. I got one right here sitting in my top right drawer and it does have my name on it. It says Business Radio X LLC. And then it says Stone Payton. Now, can I go, can I, or should I, I'll ask both questions. Back to yes. Bank of America and say, hey, I want just a Business Radio X LLC card. So I'm going to say that you should and not necessarily that you could, but you can do that. But it's going to circle back to do you have the business credit to do it? Because uh, if your your score and, and, and for all listeners, they need to write this down. You want to have an 80 and 80 out of 100 with all three credit bureaus. And here's the reason why. If you went into... Bank of America, for example, and you ask for a corporate credit card and they pulled a Dun & Bradstreet report, but you only had Experian, well, you're going to get denied. If you go into Dodge or Ford or Ram or Chevy and you try and buy a business vehicle and they pull once again a, a report and you've got a different one or your score's not high enough, you'll get denied. Then they're going to say, oh, we need your social security number. So by building business credit and having a score at 80 or above, you will always get approved. You'll always get that corporate credit card. And you know if you're buying that car, you're going to be paying 1.9% versus 7 to 15% on, on your personal credit. On a $75,000 vehicle, that's probably $14,000 saved in your pocket just by having your expenses report and utilizing corporate credit, not business. So once again, it's not about, hey, Drew, I, 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 I don't need credit or I, I do need it or I need money or I don't. It's by utilizing the smart way, your business is always going to be better off. Does that make sense? It does. It makes a ton of sense. And I, I get the distinct impression that whenever you have an opportunity to have a conversation with a business owner who's a prospective client that you can serve in this way, it probably more often than not goes in that direction and you start helping them. But I, 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 I'm still going to ask, how does the whole sales and marketing thing work for a guy like, like you? Do you find that you do need to get out there and educate and shake the trees a little bit? Or do you get a lot of referral kind of business? Yeah. How, how do you sell and market your own work? Yeah, that, that's a great question. You know, I think by doing what I enjoy anyway, and that's having an open on the uh, uh, an open, honest conversation with people, just like we're doing right now, is my favorite type of marketing. I speak at a lot of chamber of commerce. I speak at a lot of business expos, uh, podcasts, webinars, uh, radios, and I find that the education comes first. The number one response to this conversation is if anyone's been in business any amount of time, they say, hey, Drew, where were you a year ago, five years ago <laughs> yeah. or 10 years ago? Because what they're really saying to me is this is really valuable information and I wish I knew it back then. The truth is that most businesses are going to be in business for a lot longer. And isn't it great we're having a conversation today and not in a year or five years time from now where you might get into trouble, your business might be at risk, or you may not be able to take an opportunity because you didn't start today. 
And the best way that I can answer your question is if owners can have an honest conversation with themselves and not be afraid to at least listen and be open to learning something new and not set in their own ways, they're going to help themselves the most. All right. So let's take it like Lee and I, we've been in business in, in this business for 20 plus years. I, I think I, I shared with you before we came on air, I, I had black hair when we started. Uh, so <laughs> we have been at it a while, but what about the brand new startup early stage entrepreneur? I, I'm, I'm getting the sense that there's probably some stuff they should do or not do even at that stage of their business. Yeah. Yeah. You're a hundred percent right. And it start of any sort of business and doing it the right way is going to benefit you in the long run. It is true that most of the businesses that I work to that end up reaching out to me um, have felt some sort of pain or they've felt some sort of struggle or they know that they've made a mistake or use personal guarantees at some stage and they kind of want to untangle that and, and build up credit. But I really wish that more startups and entrepreneurs, I just, you know, um, had an appointment about half an hour ago with an incredible guy that's, um, you know, a young guy, uh, um, you know, just going to college right now and, he, and he's a programmer and he's starting this tech company. And, and just by helping him structure things in the right way, when his company probably is worth whatever it's going to be, we know those tech companies selling for hundreds of millions of dollars, structuring it in the right way today is going to benefit off. And taking some of these simple steps forward that we talked about, um, you know, whether it's just the website, whether it's having a business phone number, not a and not just a cell phone or a personal number. I mean, that's a big one right there. What What company is going to want to lend you money if you're still running off a cell phone number, the personal email address, not having the right website up, not being registered with the Secretary of State. You know, even sometimes having just a home address can actually hurt you. Um, not as bad mm. as a PO box, but you don't have to be in a physical location. You get a virtual business address. And just knowing some of these things in the very beginning of your business for startups and entrepreneurs, that's going to change the way their whole business runs. They'll never have to say, hey, Drew, where were you five years ago if they do it when they first start? Well, you've already shared a ton. I'm writing down this whole checklist. You know, I've already got the 411, the business phone, the business address, the, you know, having a, a, a structure that has an EIN, an established website, uh, an email that has that website domain. I mean, I don't, it, it doesn't sound um, complex I, or even hard, but you need somebody like you that knows the ropes to walk you through and make sure you get all those boxes checked and then. I'm thinking you want to have some kind of mechanism where you're able to check in and monitor your credit, just like I do my personal credit, right? You're 100% right. And what I'm talking right now is out of seven steps that we do, this is some of the 125 points that we do in the very first one. Mm. So just like you are the expert in your field for, for media and radio and getting content out there and giving so much value to your listeners, you don't generally have the time to then spend the next two to three to five to 10 years becoming a business credit expert on top of that. And if you did that, it would take away from the business that you're trying to run. So I don't ask business owners to have to understand all of this and become an expert in it. It's just like if I need an incredible pool company, I'm going to go and hire the pool company. I'm not going to try and learn how to build the pool myself. We outsource and use small businesses every day because they have expertise. Is, and look, I'm still a small business owner. You know, we, we, we have helped over 43,000 people, you know, with my partners at Jay Gold around the States. And, you know, we want to get up there to as many as we can. But, you know, at the end of the day, we know what to do. It, we've taken the time, the years to work this out. One thing that makes it almost impossible to do it all on your own is once you get set up, once you get registered with the agencies, now you need to use businesses that report to the credit bureaus. And the oh. secret is... Only 7% of companies, vendors, lenders, banks, institutions, online stores, and big box stores report to the credit bureaus. So if you try and do it on your own, you could be wrong 93% of the time. So you go out, you get the credit, you line it all up, you have it set up, you spend the money, and nothing reports, your credit score goes nowhere. And so one of the things that we specialize in um, is really knowing who reports and where to get that lending from, because otherwise you're just going to be spinning your wheels. Well, that's an insider tip. <laughs> that's good. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah, and, and it makes a little bit of sense. You know, you have to think about it. Why didn't my local bank teach me this? <laughs> and at the end of the day, if they can charge a 
you know, higher interest. You know, I came from the banking world. I, uh, nothing against it, but in their best interest as a business, if they can charge a higher interest and get personal guarantees, why wouldn't they? Um, we're really here to disrupt that entire industry. We're here to allow small businesses to get what they want when they want with whoever they want and not get turned down again. And banks benefit from this. You know, if someone goes for a business loan, you know, probably 98% of loans are <laughs> going to get turned down. Yet if those customers come to us and we help them build their business credit, they go back to that bank and 100% of the loans will get approved. So banks or accountants and financial advisors are sometimes aware about this in the beginning. And then when they actually hear what we do, we realize that we're their best ally and everybody wins. Well, I got to say, I'm... I'm- Learning as this conversation unfolds that I had a little bit of a misconception. I, I must confess, I really, in my mind, I was thinking that your work was far more transactional. And I understand that there's probably some transactional kinds of disciplines that, that, that you have to engage in. But at the root of it, I mean, the foundation of your work with the trust that you must have to cultivate among your clients and your market partners your business is a very relationship or it's very grounded in relationship, isn't it? It it absolutely has to be. You know, I I think about, you know, not only just the recession, you know, and I've been a big real estate investor for a long time and and going through, you know, the downturn sort of in the markets with the lending field that happened back then. I think about the pandemic and watching all those bars and restaurants and, you know, shut down and all of us know a story in our local town of, you know, a good business that we loved that had to shut down because they couldn't get funding. Even just to the recent, you know, of the hurricane that we went through, you know, a couple of years ago here in Florida. And what I see is when the business goes out of, you know, when they go go out of business, it doesn't just affect them and their family. Then it's the the plumber that was working on that house, or then it was the delivery mm. driver that was delivering something, you know, to that property as an example, all that business. And it starts to devastate, you know, the entire community. So I truly know that if we can support and help out more small businesses um, and teach them maybe what they don't know about this side of things, it doesn't just strengthen the local communities, it strengthens the economy at whole. Um, the latest statistics are over 40, you know, 6% of the economy is small business here in America. So isn't that something that we should be concerned about, you know, and helping it out? And if they thrive, hey, you know, <laughs> I, I get to work with small businesses. So, you know, it's a wonderful thing. All right, before we wrap, I'd like to leave our listeners with just a couple of actionable pro tips. And look, gang, the number one pro tip is to reach out and have a conversation with Drew or somebody on his on his team. But between now and then, let's leave them with a couple of actionable ideas, something to be thinking about doing, not doing, reading. Let's leave them with a couple. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a couple of immediate actionable items is, you know, get a copy of your business credit report. You know, go and see if there's something there and what your starting position is. I would like to think that your recommended credit limit should be probably 50 to 75% of your revenue. I mean, there are plenty of websites that you can go to to get a copy. You can reach out to me. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm happy to get your free copy of it to save you a couple of hundred bucks if you'd like. But just by knowing that it's there, knowing it exists, and then having a look at what's already set up and been reported uh, is amazing. Um, most people are quite happy to look at their personal credit, you know, or their 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 health report or their uh, Carfax report. But many people are, are blind or untuned to actually knowing that their business credit report is there. So th- that's one thing. The second takeaway I want to talk away take away from this is when we truly think about how you built your business up until now, do you have personal guarantees? Is your family at risk? Have you um, pierced that that corporate fail? Is there guarantees on those business so called you know business cards? And am I doing the right things to run the business as its own entity, or am I still crossing things over? There's a right way and a wrong way to do it. And now that you're aware of it, there are a lot of simple and smart tips that we've talked about to start to strengthen yourself and start moving in the right direction. And I just really hope that every business owner at least know that this exists and know some ways they can start protecting themselves and their family. Well, I am so glad I asked. That sounds like marvelous counsel. All right, man, what is the best way to tap into your work, reach out, have a conversation with you or someone on your team, whatever you feel like is appropriate, website, LinkedIn, let's give them some coordinates. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's very kind of you. You can find me anywhere at the Business Credit Guy on any of these socials. Um, I've got a great educational webinar that's just free. You can access it any day of the week, uh, and that's at jgoltwebinar.com. Um, through any of the social outlets, you're able to reach out to me and my team uh, directly and look if there's anything I can share, uh, any way I can help any of the listeners. You know, I just really want to provide that value, and it would be my pleasure. Well, Drew, it has been an absolute delight having you on the broadcast. Thank you for your insight, your perspective, your knowledge, and your enthusiasm for serving the small business community. This is uh, this has been a fun way to invest a, a Tuesday afternoon, man. Hey, I really appreciate you as well. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to be able to get this word out there. And uh, let's hopefully uh, get out there and help small businesses. Absolutely my pleasure. All right, until next time, this is Stone Payton for our guest today, Drew Smith, the business credit guy, and everyone here at the Business Radio X family saying we'll see you in the fast lane.